for making the time to uh, see us and hear about a little bit about the OYO story. Uh, can I get the clicker? So, you know, uh, first off, the reason why I think Manav set this up as a single person session instead of a multi person session was last year, uh, I and, you know, in the session that I was there, uh, even though he tried to uh, push me towards saying something uh, naughty, I didn't end up doing any of those. So he's realized that I was born middle aged and I just kept growing after that. So you can't uh, get me to, uh, you know, say things that I don't have to. I'm just kidding. Guys, so, you know, I think uh, OYO over the last three to four years has been trying to make significant impact in the Indian hospitality space. I wanted to take the time today and make sure that the business that has really started making significant impact to the lives of millions of people, how do we show and share a lot of that visibility with the group here, which has seen hospitality evolve over the last, uh, you know, half a decade or a decade? So my session has a combination of three broader areas and will also have a 10 to 15 minute question and answer session at the end, depending on what time uh, avails us. The first part that I wanted to talk about is just essentially the problem that we're trying to solve uh, and, and what that opportunity looks like. The second is the market size. I think uh, most of the times, because we talk so much about luxury and upper end hotels, we do forget that the real India is still 99% people who use mid-scale or economy accommodations. So I'd like to talk a little bit about what that market looks like. Of course, yesterday with the Invest India session, I'm sure you guys would have gotten significant more visibility as to what uh, the broader hospitality market is evolving into. And the last part is, uh, you know, some reasons to believe, that is, what are the competencies OYO has created across its economy, mid-scale, upper mid-scale categories, which are really making lives of asset managers, customers, and so on better. And we'll follow that up with questions and answers. So, you know, so there's some, uh, you know, aggressive words in here. It begins with saying that it's a radical hospitality model, just basically saying that when OYO started, Instead of saying that, hey, let me try and copy paste what model has existed for many years, we've continuously said, let's operate with first principles, look at the problems that exist, and try to solve them from the perspective of individual problem solvers rather than that of, hey, here's what the industry does and let me keep doing the same thing. So, you know, four years back, when the 19 year old me was starting uh, or entering the hotel industry, I'm asked a lot of times what inspired you to get into hospitality. Before this, I wanted to be a scientist. And I think uh, a lot of times I feel that because I was naive and I had no understanding of what demon or what pain I was getting into, I feel I got into hospitality. Otherwise, I'd have never gotten into. So I feel naivety is good in some way. So here's what the industry looked like. All assets were greenfield in nature, which means you need years to construct them. They are very high capital expenditures linked with them. Sometimes the cost of lending don't like even return in terms of ROCs of these assets. Technology is almost unknown. I mean, uh, I don't want to name the software, but we all know what software we use in five-star hotels. You need to have a four-month training to use those property management systems. Technology is supposed to make life easier, not harder. And that's what these softwares were doing. And the price points, I just put 2,000 as you know, uh, a price point of saying that in this price point, there was nothing available. So this is essentially what the market looked like. So then I tried to say that, all right, let me try to make amends with this business. But this is what it looked like. It looked like if you're the best asset manager in the country or best brand in the country, then the owner might sign in a month, but it never happens. All of you know it takes years or months at least to get an asset signed. It's a brownfield asset. If you're lucky and the property is in a good shape, then you might turn it around in six months. But generally, again, that takes years. And then when I say profitability, I mean paying back of the capex. That takes years and decades over a period of time. So I felt, look, this is not what we're going to do. We have to make consumers a beautiful living space that exists. And how do we make that happen can be a completely new model. So here's what we said, that all the large hotel chains were going after the 150 room and larger assets. We said India is a country of 4 million rooms of less than 150 rooms per property. How can we go to these properties and help the asset owner make profit and profit ourselves? And use technology to replace the need of a super expensive general manager 
while continuing to operate with the efficiencies and quality of experience that is needed. In that process, what we found was India has four million of these unbranded rooms that exist across the country. Give or take only 50,000 of them are in good quality. All the rest of the 3.9 million plus rooms are in really bad shape. And all of those properties have broken experience, they have very limited technology, the asset owner feels that, I don't know if you've noticed, all the small assets for some reason have all got glass facade. The reason was all of them felt that we are gonna build a corporate building. If you see a lot of these pro small properties, none of them are no frills, all of them are full service. Of course, uh, a lot of this goes back to Rai Bahadur Saab's uh, times when he started India's first hotels, which are all full service. So everyone said, I also want a full service hotel. So the cost, uh, the cost of operating is very high. And of course, hospitality professionals don't exist there to ensure the service qualities of a certain extent. So that's essentially where we try and operate. On the left, if you see, bottom left, that's how the four million room hotels look like. 3.9 million rooms, the ones that are not fixed. On the right-hand side, the properties you see are essentially the properties that we convert them into. That's the bread and butter of our business. We go to small, disaggregated assets, partner them, invest capital in turning them around with our 300 civil engineers, interior designers, AI scientists working together, and make sure that the customer can get a $20 clean, comfortable room. We also play in the mid-scale segment, lower and mid-scale to upper and mid-scale segment, with our second brand, which is Oyo Townhouse. There we do uh, lease or op, uh, you know, operate and market o &M contracts. And we, of course, believe that there is opportunity going upscale in the long term. Just to give you a broader context of the market, we feel the market has broadly three kinds of assets. And the reason why I say asset is because India is a very product-driven economy. It's not a distribution-based economy. Companies which are able to create good quality products will have a customer at all points of time. That's the core belief that we have. And, you know, it's been proven across segments, right? Uh, mango sip is a less than 10 rupee drink that also sells. There's a 30 rupee mango drink that also sells. And there's a 50 rupee mango drink that also sells. But that's a great product for that price point. If you're able to do that, Indian consumer is waiting for great products to buy. So there's a four million room segment, like I mentioned, the guest house and budget hotels, and increasingly serviced apartments, for which we recently announced uh, an acquisition of a serviced apartment chain in South India to uh, focus and continue to go deep into the serviced apartment segment in the coming years. There's a large demand. Very, on the left, you see, of course, there's a you know, travelers, people moving from one city to another, but the right one is what I'm very excited about. I call it the tip of the iceberg theory where you have a market size of consumers which are above the sea level, which are traveling for work, leisure, and the likes. But on the other hand, there's a huge market opportunity which is below the sea level, which is customers starting to use you because you have a great product like Townhouse, you have a great product like uh, Nova Scotia Boutique Homes, etc., coming in the market. There we are seeing consumers use hotels for reasons never thought of earlier. One of the biggest ones that we see there is actually family visitors. That is, uh, we surveyed and we asked how many people would like to stay with their families in another city? 70% did not want to stay, and 80% did not want to host. The reason why 80% did not want to stay, apart from all the problems of living in others' houses, is the Indian tradition of shagan, which is you have to anyway pay 2,000 rupees. So if you're going to pay 2,000 rupees, might as well expect a good service rather than uh, stay in somebody else's whims and fantasies. And there is, of course, a growing market for travelers, uh, you know, especially with millennials. That's what I was mentioning on the right-hand side. We see whenever there are the big IPL game nights, all of our hotels get sold out. Whenever there's rains in Gurgaon, people say that I don't want to drive from Gurgaon to Noida. It's so cheap to stay in Oyos, and the places are great. So let me just park myself there. So the millennial travel, in my view, is one of the big movers in the Indian travel industry. Where if you see in 2016-ish period, India is exactly where China was in 2007 in terms of domestic travel visitors, DTVs. So everyone who's complaining about inbound visitors should remain, remember that the Indian domestic traveler is going to create significant value for all of us. And we believe that India will grow faster than China in the coming years because, believe it or not, we as a country 
like traveling as an individual process. Pilgrimage as a process does not exist in countries like China, which is growing significantly in our markets and the likes. All right, so we are saying that there's a big market opportunity, and here is a uh, model which basically operates in a, you know, uh, I don't like uh, uh, the word disruption, but in an innovative way. But how do you do it in a sustainable manner? Because just going out and creating this difference is a great thing as a starting point. But we as entrepreneurs want to make this difference to the society for many decades to come, if not centuries. So if that's the level of sustainability we want to create, we believe great quality competencies is the only way of making sure you're always ahead of the game. So I would like to showcase some of the competencies we have created. We have four key competencies. The first is we can franchise and lease 10,000 keys a month. With 75,000 keys, we are today the largest hospitality company in India across our economy, mid-scale, uh, upper mid-scale sort of segments. I understand that there is a lot of confusion there with Marriott and Taj also trying to figure out who's the largest hospitality company. But uh, you know, for us, what we are saying is step aside. There is a large group of the small assets who have come together with a large hospitality brand like Oyo, where there are millions of customers staying every month and creating significant impact as one of the larger hospitality companies domestically. We are able to create NPS of these small assets from negative to 55 once they become a part of the Oyo brand segment. And remember, this is the hotel NPS, not the Oyo brand NPS. That is significantly higher. Retail stores take one and a half months to two months to turn around, and brownfield assets take you know, at least half a year or otherwise years. We can turn around assets in three to 14 days with our 300 strong civil engineers and interior design teams sealing, wiring, piping, flooring, interior design, and the likes. For example, here in Mumbai, there's a 60-room asset we have in Goregaon, which we recently converted from a cinema theater to an Oyo townhouse in a period of 25 days. A lot of this is unheard in the scale of turnaround in the local industry. And of course, we operate with 75% plus utilization year around leisure and urban cities combined to make sure that we can bring high levels of liquidity on our assets. So the first reason how we are able to franchise so many assets, it's because we have an OYO's proprietary system, which is what we call as the Orbis app. Within the Orbis app, you have all the assets listed, each asset's local market price of what yields they should be generating if these assets exist and hence what GOP can be generated. So instead of calling the corporate office 20 times for signing a deal, our development guy or the leasing guy can go to the hotel, open his app, and say that this is a GOP. If you like it, I will send you the O&M contract or lease contract, and we can sign it. Very decentralized, data science-oriented model of leasing and operating assets. This has reduced our time frame of franchising assets within eight to 10 days from the time of first meeting, and leasing assets in 25 days on an average from the time of first meeting. Both of this, again, are unheard time frames in the industry. We have, uh, for our general managers, duty managers, floor managers, a Krypton app, which ensures that people are focusing on the work that is needed around that period of time, again, by using data science. So we can predict the checkout time of a certain customer and have somebody go in into the room and clean up the place around that period of time. This is not complete innovation from us. This we learned from one of our shareholders called Huaju, uh, which is the leading hotel chain in China, and they operate with 0.17 staff per room. We operate with 0.3, so we are still more inefficient than them. Hopefully, we get there over time. But on the other hand, we run 16 schools where we train and educate children who then come and work in our operated assets, or we educate the AGMs who then go out and in turn train the people in our partner assets. There's a small video about what they do. This is your Captain Rohan speaking. How may I help? Can I get a reservation at a restaurant for 20 people? Can I get a chocolate banana strawberry milkshake with? I need more pillows. An extra scoop of ice cream. Can you like pick me up? Which way is the beach? What's the four letter word for can do? Uh, can you get me a cab? Make that two. Is there a 
place I can run. And sprinkles. What's the square root of 999? Can you play the drums? Can I have an umbrella? Do you have tape? Do you have... <laughs> a punchline? Can you fix my tie? A drink? And whipped cream. Can you help? Sure. Whatever you need, just ask Captain Oyo. This is a parallel of a duty manager in our hotels, whom we've also doubled up to become like a concierge agent, which currently does all of this on calls, but we're starting a chat service for them as well. So continuing to figure out what the customers need and using all the training, technology, and talent to arrange ourselves along with it. The third is turning around assets, the one that I just mentioned. So I just mentioned about how fast we turn around, how good we are, and so on. I want to show you the story of our Nepal launch. This is a new country. Our first hotel and economy asset turned around in 12 days flat. Wiring, piping, ceiling, flooring, and the likes. So a small video to showcase that. This is how the hotel looks. I'll skip past. This is a small example of how we are able to convert assets into beautiful living spaces in such a short period of time by modularizing a lot of stuff. AstroTurfs are a big example there. So you saw a lot of open areas being converted with AstroTurfs just because they're faster and easier. And the fourth is distribution. OU drives 96% of its distribution through its direct channels and only 4% through external OTAs. In the month of December 2017 that we just came out of, we booked over 2.2 million room nights in just one month. So we are able to continue to make significant impact by being a brand for our asset owners where we are able to get significant direct transactions. That doesn't mean that we don't operate with OTAs, we operate with all the OTAs. In fact, last year on Booking.com, uh, in the month of December again, we were rated the best and up-and-coming hotel chain in the three-star and below category, in the highest number of transactions, and with those highest number of transactions, the best ratings for that month. And we believe that in the future, whenever an asset comes with us, other than bringing direct distribution, even on online travel agent channels, we are able to give them the highest liquidity by means of our partnership. And well, as I uh, say this, by doing all of this, we make our asset owners' lives significantly better by operating in urban cities at 80-ish percent occupancies. The average 75 you saw is an average of urban and non-urban cities, and increase the bottom line by two times approximately, because even though their utilization grows higher than earlier, the ARRs reduce a little bit, and hence the overall ref par increases and not the ARR. And our consumer experience continues to transform with our assets, and we are able to create beautiful living spaces at low cost. Our mission with 75,000 keys, adding 10,000 a month, operating at 75% occupancy, having 70% of our revenues coming in from repeat users is quite simple. We are not here for the numbers. We are here to make sure that not the 50,000 rooms which are branded in India of the you know, give or take 1 billion population, 0.01% population gets served by them. Our intent is to serve the rest 99.9% .9 population to bring them beautiful living spaces at low cost by creating a pioneering model that we are doing here. And we want to partner most of the industry folks in whatever way, by means of asset management, by means of turning around and making over the assets, 
operating these assets and distributing these assets across the ecosystem and try to make a difference to the local society in travel and hospitality in the coming years. We are very thankful for all the help we've seen from the industry. Uh, you know, uh, I saw Parthu Saab earlier, congratulations on uh, the IPO. Everyone in the industry, mostly if you see in the Western markets, when a new company is trying to make a difference, there is not enough uh, you know, uh, welcome that they get. But I'm very thankful that I'm a part of the Indian hospitality industry, where all of us are trying to make a different uh, way of making an uh, impact to the society, but we all work together uh, as and when required. So uh, you know, that we've uh, ex great shareholders and a great team who are working together to make this uh, impact over the coming years. Thank you so much, and happy to answer any questions that you guys might have. Might have to help with the mic. I finished four minutes early, taking a cue from Sabina, so uh, that's the reason the mics were, took a little longer. Sorry about that. So this is Deepak from Pursuit. Uh, I just wanted to understand, you mentioned every point out there, like how a hotel should operate and like uh, what would be the key, key areas where one would look at in terms of uh, getting it done quickly and correctly. Uh, can you uh, put some highlights on your procurement platform or your, the procurement process you follow in terms of getting these, these done? Sure. No, that's a very important question, especially because when you, like you said, Doing it fast does not mean you don't do it right. Doing it right is as and more important. And we've learned more about it from 2016 exp 2015 experiences when we were not at our best in terms of quality of service. And we've done a lot over the last two years to get here. From our view, we operate with significant amount of uh, R&D to make sure that we get the right products. Once we know what is the right product, for example, if it is um, a German Egger wood that we need in our assets, then we use e-bidding platforms to make sure that we can procure the same products in the lowest price. For example, for our toiletry kits, we procure from a company called Biotique. There's a separate production line that we have set together along with them to make sure that the quality and the microbes and so on of the product that we want can be as per our expectation. We are the largest linen hotel, largest hotel buyers of linen in the country. And even there, we operate with very strong levels of QC, right from the levels of production, rather than that of saying that when the product comes to your hotel, you say, oh, this is good and this is not good. Um, our e-bidding platforms have been huge advantage to us, not just on quality to make sure that you have the right type of companies bidding, but also in terms of pricing. Because at the scale in which we buy, we are able to make a very transparent system of purchasing rather than a human-led system of buying products from external world. Currently, we use third-party uh, e-bidding platforms, but we are in the process of launching our own over the coming months. share with the owner of these properties usually and uh, are you when, when do you expect to break even with your business model oh that's a that's a deep question uh, you know so from our perspective there are two parts to it the first one is i'm not allowed to talk about specific numbers of what margins we share with our asset owners but suffice to say that whenever an asset owner partners with us if we don't create liquidity for him we don't want to make money and hence on the other hand, if we create enough profits for him, like I said, one and a half to two times profit jump, then we take some part of it for ourselves, our operating cost, and some of our earnings. I think uh, you know one of the principles I started with when we signed our first hotel, and it's in Hindi, I hope that's not a problem. Uh, I told to the first asset, who continues to remain with, remain with us, he has three assets now that he's bought. Uh, when we were opening our office, we invited Honorable uh, Chief Minister of Haryana to inaugurate. But I told him the story of Rajesh Yadav, who was the first owner so many times, that he said he should be inaugurating the building. So the deal that we signed with our assets, the principle behind it is, nafa hua to dono ka, nuksan hua to hamara. And we are willing to take that risk against the opportunity of higher earning in the future. So that's sort of an uh, underlying process of how our commercials work. 
In terms of break-even, we make uh, positive uh, you know, margins from all the assets that we work with, but at a corporate level, we are not profitable and we are not sharing a direction of what timeline. Uh, but uh, again, there we do not lose a lot of money in marketing and distribution. We only invest majority of our capital in R&D and capacity building, like you saw earlier. And we have close to 255 million in, on the balance sheet, so we will continue to invest more on R&D and engineering in the coming years. Could you tell us about the future expansion plan in terms of geography, the market segment, and new business model? Thanks. That's a broad question, but I think I should have addressed it in the presentation myself. It's a good question. I should have uh, thought about it. There are two parts. The first one is we aspire, as we are adding 10,000 rooms a month, roughly, we expect to end this year calendar at 180,000 keys as a part of OYO India uh, brands across OYO Rooms, OYO Townhouse, OYO Flagship, and OYO Homes, all the brands that we operate. In terms of cities, we currently operate uh, in more than 100 cities across the country. We expect to launch 50 more this year, going to the Tier 3 and you know, Tier 3 plus sort of towns, because we are seeing great uh, results from that. You know, Townhouse is not considered there as a three-star-ish hotel. Their cu customers consider us like a four-star hotel, so the rev bars are much better. In terms of uh, consumer segments, until now, until last year with OU Rooms, we were primarily focused on the economy customers, which were primarily millennials, young professionals, and small and medium businesses. But with OU Townhouse and OU Homes, we are focused on trying to bring significant number of corporates. So we now have more than 5,000 corporates as our uh, con continuous customers, and also with Nova Scotia serviced apartments that we recently acquired. And from uh, the last perspective, which is about, uh, you know, how do we think about all of this? We have a model within our company from a supplier side and from a consumer side. We say what kind of assets exist in India, from resorts to hotels to boutique hotels, serviced apartments, and so on. How can we create significant impact in all of these areas? And we, on the other hand, have a model of what kind of customers exist in India, all the way from a young professional or a millennial to senior citizens who gets an LT at the end of the year working in the government job uh, for traveling once or twice a year? And how do we make a difference to their life as well? So we will continue to expand into all of them over the coming years. But this year, we have a lot going on. So we are very focused in just our three core brands, which is OYO Rooms, OYO Townhouse, and OYO Homes. What Thanks. What comp the competitive intensity in this segment with Ginger and now Lemon Tree, uh, lemon, uh, tree Hotels? How is the competitive intensity? Are you competing with these budget brands? mid-scale brands? So, you know, of course, each of our brand has a certain competitive intensity which, with each of these chains. But I have, as an entrepreneur, a view there. My view there is the more the merrier. That is, uh, you know, in some way, I was very inspired when I saw Lemon Tree Hotels in Gurgaon to say that, how can I also be a hotelier? And Parthu Saab has, of course, been an inspiration to so many other hoteliers. So from our perspective, we feel that more the hotel chains in the economy to mid-scale, rather than just the upscale, it's better for all of us, because I don't feel our competition is with the branded guys. I feel our competition is with the 3.9 million bad quality living spaces where customers have to compromise the quality of life, the quality of price, et cetera, that they pay. So we feel that all of us are working together to make a difference to the industry over the coming years. Ritesh, first up, congratulations. I think you started last, and it's uh, you're already the largest. So my question is actually with regards to that. It seems to me that the scale and speed with which you're doing things um, seems to be a capacity beyond what you yourself can consume for, for your own brand. Is this now becoming a vehicle that you're going to let other brands ride on? Is Nova Scotia first of a uh, slew of, are you going to be the Alibaba in a sense? of hospitality brands, because also in this industry, we see that uh, names are not very elastic. It's difficult to use the same name across a segment of, of various products. So will you be recreating new brands that kind of depart from OYO as their key name, and or will you be onboarding brands that you kind of bring in organically? What happens in the next three years? 
Sure. No, look, first off, uh, you know, we are all very inspired by Ali, but we are nowhere close to them. That's a half a trillion dollar company uh, in terms of scale and impact. But we, but we sincerely hope to do some percentage of that. I think there are two questions in your view. The first one is, will we partner more and more brands in the ecosystem? And second, will we have a multi-brand strategy? I think the second one is easier because that's in my control. So uh, we definitely believe that as we try and uh, reach more and more different kind of customers, having a multi-brand strategy definitely makes sense. And I think um, you know, my views have evolved there over the last few years. Uh, and especially as an entrepreneur, you're always very passionate about your core brand that you don't want anything else. But over time, uh, you know, uh, uh, learning from the market should humble you and make you more pragmatic. So that's one. So we definitely believe multi-brand will be a part of our thinking in the coming years. Speaking about how we think about the broader market, like I told you earlier, we have a lot of these competencies that we have created where we are actually very happy to bring entrepreneurs more than brands because we believe that Nova Scotia for us, more than just being a service department chain which has top corporates in India, is actually Girija and Madhu who are building this company with a lot of love and a lot of affection for the customers, understanding what they want and the likes. So we believe if we partner with folks like those, and provide our competencies like distribution, civil engineering, capital, and the likes, they can grow their business much faster than they could earlier. And we get a lot of benefit from it, because instead of doing everything ourselves, we are able to partner entrepreneurs in the same process. So we will be very open to doing it. We are having uh, you know, quite a few conversations there as we speak as well, and we will continue to have it in the future. Take one more question, and I think the, the screen has been pointing towards saying time's up. I think we have two, whichever you guys like. Thank you, uh, Eunice. I would like to, to congratulate you for the extraordinary work you've been doing. My question actually is about the, um, uh, it's on the same side that uh, on international expansion. Uh, how expandable is your model uh, outside of India and especially outside of the region of Asia if there's any plans to go um, either to other continents, Europe, other, pl other places in general? Thank you. Thanks, Eunice. Uh, of course, uh, you know, from our perspective, we are very, uh, you know, uh, happy to be one of those players whom uh, possibly, uh, you know, uh, coming out of India, which are able to create an impact across the countries. First things first, I think we are very focused in India as a core market to begin with, because we believe that India has this large opportunity where every, it's almost like, you know, I, have, I feel about India is, you know, it's a market where uh, until you figure it out, you always feel that, hey, the land is so hard. But once you're able to get the first dig, then all the other levels of digging are much easier. So the more you dig, the more exciting the market gets. So that's how I'm seeing India. I feel that this market is going to be the most exciting market in the world over the coming years. But I genuinely believe that there is definitely transferability of the model. We operate in Malaysia and Nepal. And uh, you know, we will continue to opportunistically look at a few other countries. But our core, uh, in terms of competency creation, problem solving, teams, and capital investments will continue to be very India in nature at this point of time. Thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate.